Hello, everyone, and welcome to Red Dirt and Stardust, where we are not playing D&D 5e today. Due to some scheduling conflicts and rearranging and things like that, we are actually going to be playing the second game of You Awaken in a Strange Place, a completely <laughs> improvised TTRPG from Jacob Andrews of Draw Fee fame. So this is going to be completely random. It's going to be completely bonkers. We played one previously that was insane. And so hopefully we get to that level of insanity again today. So we'll just go through the rules uh, since we have a player that has not played before. We'll just go through the rules so that we can set everything up. So of course, everybody comes in unprepared and we have to finish it this session. So everybody needs to have a piece of paper, a pencil and two D6. So that's the basic bitch cube dice, pretty simple. <laughs> uh, we have a player who does not have pencil and paper. That is okay. Um, so, of course, then we also have to pick the games master. We that's done. Um, then we are going to roll our two d sixes. This is going to determine how crazy the game is going to get because it is going to be completely random. So, I'm going to need everybody to roll their two d six. And tell me what you get. Okay. Un momento. Mm-hmm. I got a six and a five. Oh, am I supposed to be rolling twice? Yeah, you roll the two D six. Mm -hmm. Oh. So total of five. So you got a five seven. and then five. you got a seven. And Kyle, what did you get? Uh 11, 11, total, 11. All right. So it looks like Kyle, once again, you're going to be thinking of the genre. Please don't pick magical girl anime again. Because <laughs> <laughs> I know that happened last time and you picked it. Um, and Loved it. Loved it. then that means, Antonis, you are going to be thinking of an adjective for the game. Just an adjective. And Yofi, you are going to be thinking of the location. I am going to give you 30 seconds to think about it. All right. So, Kyle, what is the genre? The genre is urban horror fantasy. Urban horror Ooh. fantasy. Loving. And Andonis, what is the adjective? Well, I was going to use an adjective. Just say it. That Kyle yeah. already used. <laughs> Oh, urban oh. or horror? <laughs> Horrifying. Um, but I this always happens. Um, just go for just go for something. Pick shoot, one. Shoot, just shoot one. throw a okay. dart at the wall. Yep. Uh, um, I just came from work. My brain isn't working. <laughs> How'd you do? Uh whimsical. Whimsical. Okay. And Yofi, what is the setting going to be? A hospital. A hospital. Damn, these lined up horrifically. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> a whimsical urban horror fantasy hospital. Love it. Hey. All this right. So, <laughs> in the same order, that we did this whole thing. You are each going to be making a statement about the world, and that statement will be true, but you only get one. So, Kyle, we'll start with you. Uh, humans know about monsters, but don't like them. Humans know about monsters.
but don't like them. All right. Andonis? The monsters that look the less threatening are oftentimes the most dangerous. Okay, word. Our most. All right, and Yofi, what is your statement? Humanity has become afflicted by an as yet uncured virus that turns them into monsters. This just sounds like an adult version of Monster High. We're going for it. Fucking do it. I was also going to say this sounds like something like a 2000s anime show. Also, very much, yes. Like All right. uh, Madoka Magica. All right. Oh, I was just about to say. Mm -hmm. um, so now one. we are going to kind of talk about these statements a little bit and kind of flesh out exactly what's going on in the world to get a little bit of a clearer picture to kind of narrow in on certain quirks and aspects about the world to kind of mesh the statements together. Um, so we have that humans don't like monsters. The least threatening looking monsters are the most threatening monsters themselves and humans turn into monsters because of an uncured, as of yet uncured virus. So of course we have to try and find ways to mesh these facts together. For example, do people know that the monsters are all humans? Are they all humans or they're monsters and humans are simply turning into Well, they monsters? were humans because it sounds like the monsters, did all the monsters come from the virus or are there monsters that did not come from the virus? Were they the super spreaders that came to this world somehow? Um, mm. Is okay. this sort of like a, 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 the mist? Can humans tell the difference between a human created monster and a monster monster and hate them but not... What if the super non-threatening looking monsters are the original monsters that carry the virus and they are only the most dangerous because of that? So like maybe they're super fluffy bunnies or something, but if they bite you, you turn into a roided out werewolf or some shit. Oh, so yeah. like the, the rabbit of Karenabog. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Okay. Uh, that reference is going to last forever. All right. So the super spreader not threatening appearing but threatening monsters are were not originally human. They came from right. somewhere. Okay. But we don't know where. All right. So can what humans if... Oh, yep. Yeah. What if the monsters that weren't originally human are the only monsters that aren't humanoid in shape. I'm dumb. Like, okay. say the bunny, like a bunny, or perhaps, like, one that looks like a fish. Like, there's a difference between ones that are purely more animal kingdom as opposed to human kingdom. Okay. So, like, the teddy that. bears were never human, but, like... The fish people were, because yes, they're sure. human shaped. Okay. So this this is starting to sound like uh, the fish town in um, H.P. Lovecraft. Oh, Innsmouth. Yeah. Mm. Yep. So, because it is a virus, and it is as of yet uncured, is there a different level of hatred? for humans that got turned into monsters due to the virus, or is it exactly the same as the horrifying super mm, spreaders? I think there would be more of a hatred for, for the ones that used to be human because of the in inherent fear of becoming like them. 
oh, but the hospital that we're at is particularly frowned upon because it's in the interest of developing a cure instead of just killing. killing. And improving the quality of life for the monsters that used to be human. Like trying to make them feel as much as their old self as they can. Well, that presumes right. the people who are infected, are they still, do they still have human consciousness? Yeah, are they, are they still have... in control of their faculties? Or are there they fully be... given into the monster? Maybe there's a time period of progression. I was mm. going to say, maybe some, that could vary, maybe. You know, a oh, very I, person to person, like how their bodies react to the virus. Yeah, right? like, like each the time person limit too. Each person's genetics have like an effect on this. Yeah, right. Sure. So is it also progressive, where like somebody might progress through the monstrousness so slow that they themselves die before they reach that point, or is it? Sure. Why not? I like oh, that. Okay. Maybe there's also. Like that? between the progression of the physical effects of the virus versus the mental. Sure, like maybe somebody goes crazy before they get all hairy, and maybe somebody gets real hairy before they go all crazy. Right. World building is one of the things that I'm going to look at. That. <laughs> this, is the, this is what I love about this game. It's like, it's just, you just do everything. This is about to get crazy. Time. Yeah, I, yeah. I love the notes that I take for this game because I literally wrote progressive Progressive dash different dash mental versus physical. And that's just the note. Uh-huh. Um, all right. So the hospital is developing a cure and is trying to keep these monsters comfortable. Um, so they would obviously have facilities for that. The disease is progressive, but it differs based on genetics. Some people progress slow. Some people progress fast. How much research is there surrounding this disease? Like, is it just a gamble or are there genetic markers that people are aware of? Like, like a test you could do for like cancer. Of like, I'm more likely to get these types of cancers or whatever. Or is it just fully random? Like, you don't know until you get affected. Um, super think, early stages research, I, I feel like. If, if I anybody... also like to think that there would be different sources of financial income going into this hospital. Um, like oh for sure yeah like there's the government um part of them who genuinely just want this to stop happening others that want to utilize it other and then there's maybe like uh Secret vampire mommy donor who yeah was okay. infected 300 years ago and it's just extremely slow progression yes. and I'm, maybe I'm there's feeling the, like factions happening you know and maybe oh, there's a uh, a wealthy millionaire who wants to find out how he can select, how he can alter alter this oh, virus. Like to, literally like, developing like, body mod technology so that people yes. could become a monster okay. without going insane. And well, choose that, what they but get. also so that he can like, it's very similar to Frankensteining where he can choose the best options um, yeah. from these like different monsters to different military to projects, some kind of thing. No, to like turn himself into like the pinnacle of evolution. Okay, big bad guy. One big bad guy. Okay. Gotcha. Interesting. I'm feeling like if anybody feels the same, I'm feeling like worldwide, there could definitely be like, I'm seeing like three different views, right? I'm seeing, I'm seeing the humans or maybe four. The humans who want to cure the thing. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing humans who want to weaponize it. Mm -hmm. And I'm seeing the monsters who are... I'm seeing one of two things. Either, like, fight for monster rights, like I'm still sane, but I'm a werewolf, or fuck you, this is the future of evolution. Down um, so it's very down. similar to, like, one of the X-Men movies, where there uh -huh. was a cure. I just watched 97. <laughs> right. And um, like you, it was the it was something really cool where they had the on one side of the street you had the mutants who were like screaming that we don't need a cure, and then on right. the other side you had the mutants who were lining up to get the cure. 
I'm feeling very that. Mm. I'm feeling very that. And also, it reminds me of the episode, of the scene where the cure was first announced online, and they were all in the room, and there was like a very obvious like storm was like we don't need a cure and then right um rogue yeah. was like well you're not the one who um could possibly kill someone just by touching them oh yeah <laughs> cuz rogue's powers are weird uh-huh um, yeah all right i'm feeling that i'm feeling that flavor like you have the go- the storm goddess versus the human um, um energy parasite oh yeah yeah, very much that energy. Um, so yeah, varying different donors to the hospital with varying different goals. Um, I I did do factions um, with differing interests. So I put body modification, military, cure, coexist, and takeover as sure. like the different factions. I can um, feel that. With the coexist versus takeover being the the monsters where one is... Yeah, we are the future, given to us, and the other one is just live with us. We, you know, we weren't made this way or whatever. What so, if there was a yeah. re- what if there was a research team that was trying to? It was like a combination. It's very similar to Atlantis, where you had like different specialists, like one that specializes in. Um, ancient history, one that specializes in um, bioscience, another one that specializes in, in um, field survival, um, and they're basically like trying to trace the virus back to its source. Hmm. Um, okay. Sure. Maybe that's the hospital's mission. Find out where it came from. Go from there. So I guess that would mean is the virus ancient like like are we talking like um interview with a vampire sort of ancient disease or like resident evil ancient disease or are we you what know if, or is it more of like a modern What if it's old like Kyle said cuz we have, have like maybe a 300 year old vampire donor lady or something but the faction that wants like the evolution thing is helping the infecting monsters? I don't know. Like maybe that's why it's become more widespread. What if, what if it was previously, like historically, what if it was so suppressed or whatever, so secretive, and then like I don't know, nineteen thirties or World War Two or something, mm. um, someone experimented with the occult too much and released all of the things, whereas it used to be like a tiny, tiny hidden other world scenario just like in urban fantasy there's this idea of like the veil between the normal people what we know and the in example of urban fantasy that most people know true blood right Mm -hmm. yeah okay yeah like maybe some of these monsters intentionally spread false information about them to make their existence seem less likely so the veil got broken by an outbreak because like a group of scientists or something fiddled with the disease and that existed for thousands of years and ended up making a super virus that just spread across the planet. What if the virus sure. was caused by a radiation that resulted in the in the mutation of genetics? We the problem is we do also have the original monsters. Like were mm-hmm. the super spreaders like what were the what were the super spreaders is the issue maybe maybe that's the thing maybe they weren't super spreaders until whatever Kyle was talking oh, about oh they got experimented sort on of like um, and trouble. then radioactive and, fallout woke up killer bunny from outer space number 34 yeah. and now yeah. half of japan is filled with actual cat girls oh yeah. god <laughs> that pretty much oh okay. and then, i'm in the- Makes me think of like the really mentally messed up anime that I've seen where it's like, hey, there's this cat girl and this guy is basically living his ultimate fantasy, but the cat girl is a little too close to being a cat. And next thing you know, she's spraying herself all over him. Um, uh, experiment, ancient, okay. All right. Um, 
let's see what else we say. So I think we have one minute. I'm just gonna oh, grab a drink. Okay. I was gonna say I think we've narrowed down the facts enough at this point. Um that we have a lot a lot of stuff to work with. Hmm? One last thing. Um, okay. what if there were isolated incidents in the hospital where the residents or perhaps even also the staff were starting to disappear. Disappearances, all right. Oh, also, other thing. And it would probably just be like a one word answer because we need to move on to the creating characters. Yes. Are the monsters either traditional silver screen monsters like mummies, vampires, werewolves, are they wackadoo tentacles and eyeballs monsters or oh. is it a combination of both? Well, the I thing is like there are fair. different types of monsters based on region. Like in Europe, there's a werewolf. In Japan, there's one that basically looks like an umbrella with a leg. So we are going with the traditional folkloric monsters then. Or are we yeah. going with... I'm cool with that. Yeah, I, I think it would make things more simple. All yeah. right. It's like, probably... perhaps there's some hereditary ancestral aspect to the um, genetics that result in the type of monster that someone turns into. Yeah. All right. So now that we have all of that together, we are going to create your characters. Yay. So this is the part where it's it's a bit weird because you all are going to be creating skills. You are going to have 16 skills at the end of this, meaning that all four of us are going to be thinking of four skills. Since you all are the players, you all will get to pick skills for your characters. But remember, everybody else in the universe will have these skills. But these are the ones that are going to be you going to be not necessarily unique to you, but the ones that you will be the best at. So when you make your four skills, they must be skill, they must be verbs. So it, we can't have like medicine or knowledge. We have to be, it has to be things like recall information, know something, run, jump, spit, fart, scream, do a somersault, Whatever. stuff like that. You can be as specific or as broad as you like, but the ones you make will get bonuses. Everybody else's you will have, but you will have a plus zero to it. You need one skill that you are amazing at. That will be a plus two. You will need one skill that you are relatively good at, better than the average person. That will be plus one. You will need a skill that you're pretty bad at, which will get a minus one. And you need a skill that you are terrible at. And that will be a <laughs> minus two. You will only have bonuses to the skills you make. I will be making four other skills. And that will cover like everything else. I don't get special bonuses to those. And you won't get special bonuses to those. They're just skills that everybody in this world might have. Um, so we will just run through and... I'll let you all do yours and I will do mine at the same time. If we run into duplicates, we'll have a roll off. Whoever gets the highest one keeps it. Whoever gets the lowest roll does not keep it and has to make up a new one. So how many verbs are we making ourselves? Four. Four? Okay. So one will be plus two, one will be plus one, one will be minus one, one will be minus two. And do we just... You're, you're kind of you're thinking of your character at the same time. Think yeah, like what person do you want to be? Together. Okay. Something they're amazing at, something they're good at, something they're bad at, mm -hmm. something they're horrible at. Okay, so let's see. Um This is definitely one of the hardest parts of this because it's right. like just trying to think. 
especially for me because I I don't get a special any special bonuses and I'm basically here to cover for skills that might be missing for the rest of you who might make character specific stuff. Hmm. I may have to change some of these, but yeah. I have my four. I may end up needing to change them. I will say if I end up with duplicates, I will be remaking mine. I'm not going to roll off against you. I'll let you have them. Okay. So, so but if you have a duplicate okay. with another player... You'll have to roll off to see who keeps it. Sorry, I'm trying to think of verbs with the kind of monster that I'm thinking of without them being lame. Mm. Oh, you're making a monster character. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I was about to say interesting. You're playing a monster. Oh, so, yeah. um, you might not be the only one. <laughs> Am I the only one doing the mad scientist? <laughs> so yeah, feel free to like vaguely discuss your characters a little bit if you want to, because this is the this is the character creation thing. So I'm stuck yeah. on my fourth, like the so it's plus two, plus one, minus one, minus two, correct? Yes. Yeah. I need to figure out my minus two. Ugh. Oh. Same. I need to do my no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Minus two. Breathing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Although it would be interesting to have a breathing skill. I know we've had some pretty wacky skills. Like, we literally had a skill last time that was get what I want. <laughs> and I actually, I actually, oh, I actually ended up with a skill that kind of does that to some degree. <laughs> I made some assumptions about what your characters are. Uh, let me think. Uh, it's so hard for me to come up with a verb that, that's not all, that's not basically the one I already like the two I already have. Oh yeah, this this part is pretty hard. It's ridiculously hard. Um, how many of us are actually looking up lists of verbs? Nope. What is he very bad at? Let's think. So I see two people are stuck on what your characters would be awful at. Yeah, what is what is he awful at? <laughs> Interestingly enough, I have three D's. I didn't try that, but they all start. Oh. Most of mine are two words. I only have one that's only one word. The rest of mine are all two words. So that might help you. Uh, you can use multiple words as long as it is itself a verb. Race. So yeah. like, if your character's bad at locomotion, can someone help me move? I feel like that's a bad call, man. I really do. I just, there's an idea I want to do. Well, somebody just roll me around. It's fine. Oh my God. Are you literally like a, a, a are you a Wilson life. monster? Just a volleyball with a face on it? That a big fleshy volleyball that everybody has to roll around? Oh God. This is truly going to live up to the, oh wait, now we lost terrifying. We instead did whimsical. That's going to be interesting. So how far uh, are we along, yeah, everyone? Got it, got it. I got it. I'm good. You got and it? Okay. I'll just need one last verb. I got my last verb or compound verb. Yeah. Okay. Um no. stupid advertisements. Oh yeah. I am not going to choose a pop. 
I'm really bad at apologizing. Is that one of your skills? Is apologizing? No. No. Oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it would have been interesting to have it's that like, as a skill. We can, we can do that. Like You can. You literally can. There's nothing stopping you. Uh, la, da, 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 da. Sorry. I, kn- I knew I was going to be the last person. That is perfectly fine. Th- this was a struggle last time, too. I remember. <laughs> oh, God. Colton. Poor Colton struggled with the verbs on his... Um, no, 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 Um, maybe protect? You can do that. Like, my character is better at destroying things than... Not that. (laughs) He is at protecting things. Sure, why not? Sure, why not? All right. Okay. All right. So we'll just go in the same order that we've been going in... The whole night. Yep. So, what are your skills, Kyle? Kyle, oh, um, your you know, skills. My character um, plus two to singing. Singing. Okay. Plus one to swimming. Oh God. Damn minus it. minus one to resisting hunger. God damn it! <laughs> minus two to running. Yep, that makes sense. I see it. All right. Next up. Um, so plus two to uh, charm. Charm. Plus- what do you mean by charm? Charming. Okay. And what are your next three? Plus one to sh- um, shifting. Shifting. Yeah, what does that mean? Transforming. Yeah, Transforming, okay. How? So like a werewolf shifting into werewolf form or? More like turning into other people or changing his appearance. Now remember, we also have all of these skills too. Yes. That that is that is something. Do we want to make it a little bit more broad, like change appearance and allow for things like disguises as well as literally transforming into something else? Like that might be a little bit more helpful. Yeah, like maybe um go for that. Monsters are able no, because that sort of defeats the whole purpose of the the issue. Like if monsters were able to transform into the human versions of themselves. Right. But maybe even though we were able to but like I said, change appearance can cover a lot of stuff. Like literally putting on like those Groucho glasses with the mustache on it could also be considered change appearance. Yeah, because so a lot not... of monsters have abilities that are similar to that. All right. Sure. I can go for that. Um, Shit. Uh, singing. Uh, I, I can have, uh, I, I'm writing them all down. So what's your fourth? Okay. Um. Well, my third. Um, minus one to overtaking. Overtaking. Like dominating? Yeah. Okay, so you have charming, change appearance, overtaking, and what's your last one? Uh, minus two to protecting. Protecting. All right, and what are the other four? Other so, four? oh, Yo, sorry. I gotta, I gotta think of. I'm gonna, I want to think of a new one because overtaking kind of lines up with. I was gonna do intimidating. Oh, I feel okay. Like, okay, so I'm plus two to diagnosing. 
a plus one to dissecting, uh, minus one to dodging, and let's see, how about a minus two to mm, motivated. Motivating. It's a, a terrible motivator. <laughs> okay. So we'll have to discuss because dissecting is very similar to my first skill that I picked, perform surgery. <laughs> so okay. I'm wondering if it's if there is enough of a difference to warrant those being different skills or if I have to change mine. <laughs> I I think I would change yours because I picked dissecting to because I was thinking about surgery, but dissecting could also be like, yes, let me, let me push these two rocks apart here really quick to get the thing that's underneath. I dissected the rocks. You know what I mean? Oh, so you're pulling a get what I want. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying very hard to think carefully about the words I chose. Okay. So while I real quick think about the fourth skill that I'm going to give you all, actually, no. I know exactly what I'm going to do. Comfort. Because bedside manner. So oh. the first one is going to be comfort. Am I supposed to be writing down all of these? Yes. Yes, but we'll go through it at the end. So if you if you lost track, don't worry. So my first skill is comfort. The second one is speed read. Okay. Third one is search. Mm-hmm. And fourth one is gain access. My thought process, of course, was like files, like hospital files yeah, or yeah. programs or things like that. But also you can gain access to a door okay. or yeah. a box. So it's kind of both unlock and hack and a few other things all together. Sure. Yeah. All right. Okay. I have 12 written down, so I'm definitely missing some. Yeah, so I'll just run through the list because it's it's quite an extensive list. I'll start with mine and then we'll go on. So we have comfort, speed read, search, gain access, singing, swimming, resisting hunger, Running, charming, change appearance, mm -hmm. overtaking, protecting, diagnosing, dissecting, dodging, and motivating. So tell me if I need to repeat any of those. Nope. Because these are these are a hodgepodge of weird skills. Yeah. <laughs> but thus but... is the game. <laughs> Motivating. What am I doing? <laughs> well, didn't we have encourage a friend last time? But that was like magical girl shit. So it was, <laughs> yeah. I was a I was a magically empowering cat yeah. who like meowed to help them. I think you had a minus one in encouraging a friend though. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I did. All right. So in a moment, we're going to go on a five minute break. But what we do need to do is we do need to discuss our characters a little bit so that we can give them a name. Well, I won't have to, you all will have to. Give them a name, give a little bit of information about them, and then we also need to establish what the goal is of this group. What is the goal? Are you hunting down a monster? Are you trying to protect the lab from something that's attacking it? Are you all trying to deliver as a, a cure? Like you've found the cure and you're rushing to deliver it, but things are attacking you? Like what, what are you doing? But also, who are you? I'm assuming Kyle is playing a mermaid. Yeah. <laughs> because I the it. first two skills gave it away. And I was like, oh, so we're playing a, a, a chompy mermaid. Yeah. A chomp yeah. Chomp right. Mermaid. The third skill kind of gave that away. Mm -hmm. One of those bloodthirsty mermaids. <laughs> okay. So 
Kyle's playing a bloodthirsty mermaid. Yes. Who is everybody else playing? I'm be I'm gonna be a doctor. I'm gonna I'm gonna be a surgeon. A, a, let's say a research surgeon. Yeah. Um. I okay. no no he yes um he experiments on the on the corpses of the monsters that we weren't able to cure sure figure stuff out um let's call him Hamish Angstrom and he would Hamish be German Angstrom surgeon and a handlebar mustache ah of course you have to have a handlebar mustache of course. <laughs> All right. So, Kyle, do you have a name for your mermaid and what and other information about your mermaid aside from is a mermaid <laughs> that eats people? Uh, her name is Adeline. Uh, Adeline? She, yeah. She has, she's been at the facility probably mm, two years, maybe, depending on how long the facility's been open. She's been a subject there for a while. Um, her classification is stable currently. Uh, she doesn't appear to mutate. She hasn't mutated further in the two years that she has been there. Uh, she hasn't evolved, mutated. The virus hasn't pushed her past what she's become when she got there. The only noticeable thing is that um, they've throw. She kind of just has a a Sea World esque tank in part of the hospital. Um, but it's not as sad. Because it's not just not as sad. It's fine. Well, she's people um, size, not orca <laughs> size. So yeah, she, can, size, she can live in the sea world size. tank, but just fine. It's people um, size. <laughs> uh, she has a, she hungers for flesh. Not just human necessarily. Uh, and she's um, typically fed a uh, pig. Of course. Um, they, they, as is logical. They'll give her I'll give her some pig carcass from time to time. But other than her hunger, she has maintained the majority of her human faculties. Um, and yeah, she, um, the only, I guess, a noteworthy thing is that during the full moon, she does become more agitated than usual because of the effects of the tides. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Oh, uh, she can survive in any sort of water. Um, they've any run water. water. Yeah. They've tried salt water, brackish water, fresh water, and even chlorinated water. And so none have appeared to have, goals. yeah, none have appeared to have um, negative impact to her. So nice. She's all right. Water resilient, yet also require. If she has to move around the hospital, I feel like maybe she's got like a wheelchair or something. I don't know. I was for some odd reason I was thinking one of those zorbs that's full of water that she can push. <laughs> Amster ball. <laughs> Yes. Oh, and she. Oh, um. She can survive outside of it for some time and even move. She's just not good at it. Uh, because her so her tail's probably like six feet long by itself. Okay. And there's like mud puppy fins going along it, so that if she has to crawl, okay. kind of like slither crawls on land. Okay. Like a, uh, okay. Like a sexy mermaid snake thing. It's it's weird. Only it's. If you've seen she creature, it's very she creature movement. I'm I'm feeling you. I'm feeling you. Okay. She I creature is a fantastic B horror film starring Carla Gugino from the early two thousands. If nobody's uh, seen it, love her. Oh mm -hmm. my god. It's a uh, it's a mermaid horror film. You love mermaid okay. horror. Okay. Uh. Okay. Okay. Are do you, does your character look like that, or does your character look more human? <laughs> In because who boy. Oh, uh, that's that's the full monster monster form of them. This is more of a oh. There's a the mermaid in that film spends the majority of the film looking like a classical mermaid before she starts murdering everybody and crawls out and turns into that. Okay, uh, so this yeah. is that was you during a full moon. Okay, yeah, some something like that. Uh, Adeline, okay. she looks like um, she's very she she looks a lot more pretty than you would expect, and she's like a classical looking um mermaid with just up the uh tail's a little longer than you'd think it would be for movement her teeth are a little bit sharper um they're not full shark teeth but they're also like a little bit off of human teeth at this point okay 
um, neck and gills running along the inside of her um, rib cage. Um, so yeah. All right. Modesty, our... modesty scales. It's uh, modesty, yeah, of course. Modesty modest. scales, of course. Always need those. Yeah. Um, and our third and final character. Um, so my character, um, his name is Andrea. Um, he is an incubus. But, uh, um, basically speaking, um, he has like very uh he has like short um very not like overly curly um but enough where it's like very much cupid like uh cupid-esque um style to it um and it's also like a bright red um mm. and he has like uh, when he has like bat wings on his back that are big enough for him to glide, but not big enough for him to fly. Got um, it. Okay. And he ha um his limbs, like he has claws on his feet and hands, and both of his limbs have sort of like an ombre uh, blackness to them that are darker, darkest when they're at, like, the limbs themselves and mm -hmm. get lighter um, and more to his, like, uh, pale blush um, tone. And he's also, like, very, um, like, swimmer's build. Um, sure. And he is a patient at the hospital um particularly because of his dietary needs um he's which also results in the a lot the the hospital basically using him to calm down um aggressive uh patients uh, so you're the resident monster fucker <laughs> <laughs> what we're saying um what we're saying we did say whimsical so i mean is this yeah, more I of a like a care bear aura or is this like literal fucking because this is going up on youtube um right. something to keep like, in mind um well and obviously like things would be implied um but like uh like when adeline gets too ferocious like do we send you in there to like you know yeah. Butter her biscuit so she calms the fuck down. <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah, that, that is the question. Is it always sex or is it like an aura where people are just friendlier to you? So sending you in to like yeah, what, what version that aura? Um, it, it's sort of like both depending on the severity of the situation. You've got love it's here. Like uh, oftentimes he's just like placed into uh, therapy sessions to help keep uh, people like in check. Okay. So yeah, it is most of the time an aura, sometimes fucking. Got yeah. it. All right. So now that we have the characters established, this hodgepodge team of characters, what is the goal for this one shot? What is the goal that you want to accomplish that the group wants to, to accomplish? So I was thinking about this uh -huh. while we're doing our characters. What if, and I don't know by whom yet, but we talked about all these different warring factions <coughs> that would have like a reason to, what if the hospital is under attack? Like right just now by, maybe by more than one faction. I don't fucking know, but somebody's not happy that we're doing what we're doing. And mm -hmm. the goal is either I don't know, we can talk about that. Get out safely, stop the invaders, protect the most precious research. Uh, you know, what are we feeling? Um, maybe we are trying, what if there's like a, uh, a 
clinic room in the hospital uh, in case of invaders. Um, that's only accessible to the staff. Um, and, you know, we are trying to fight through the invaders to get to that uh, safety room. Mm, I like that, but it seems too small. It seems... Yeah, the goal like, does need know, to be a little bit bigger so that we can actually pad no, it mean, out because, like, or else at some point we will have to literally change the goal. Like that um, seems like something that we could introduce as a as another a new world statement. Like you make new world statements as the as the world goes yeah, on. Yeah, we'll, we'll discuss that in a moment. Uh, but but yeah. um, like that sounds like something to achieve, like a as a stop, like a long, mm -hmm. a long thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, what if we are there to? What if we're trying to protect the staff from the invaders? Okay, I get that. So. If because we're like, there's going to be a difference between like a mostly human staff um, who are trying to help the transformed humans into monsters um, regain their humanity versus the actual monster patients who are very like physically superior and have abilities. So if we go that route, I would say let's go the yeah like 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 protect the hospital sort of thing protect the research that's going on here get the patients to safety and then what i feel like we have to call somebody you know what i mean who are mm -hmm. like Busters. yes but you know what i mean like there's an emergency phone in the panic room and the panic room sure. has to be occupied and closed in Ooh. order for you to use it so it's Ooh. like okay. rescuing what amanda waller and suicide squad yeah what somebody who has like the access code right like to the to the panic phone thing mm -hmm. but like it's not us and we have to get that person to the thing safe you know guard the target yeah. sort of situation what if it's like a uh what if the access to the uh, safety room is a retinal scan of a specific person sure yeah i'm cool with that but not us. That would be too easy. Yeah. yeah. But like the head of the hospital. Mm -hmm. Okay. Head of the hospital. What's her name? Because it's a bad bitch. I'm, I've already decided um, she's got a cooter. <laughs> Agatha. Yes. Um, Agatha. I swear to God, if you say Harkness. Oh, okay. Thornbury. <laughs> Thornbury. Agatha Thornbury. Agatha Wilkins. Sure. I feel like she has amazing hair either way. All right. I'll go Agatha Wilkins. All right. So the goal is to rescue Agatha, to get Agatha Wilkins to the panic rooms that you can call back uh, up, as well yeah. as rescue as many people along the way as possible. The, the head of the National Medical Institute of England, because I think we're in England now. I just said it. I don't know. <laughs> Her name was Agatha. What was I supposed to do with that? Yeah. We'll, we'll just say, what if it's something like the International Medical Institute of sure. Virology or something? The National Medical yeah, Institute there, of Virology. What if she was like Namiv? Old, Namiv. but also badass. 100 percent read she's my 40, mind she's 48 not 50 she hasn't hit it yet she's still dating she gets her hair done every two weeks and those heels click when she walks all just right saying. so now that we have but, but got... the buttons are all the way up okay the buttons are all the way up let me just yes say. of course the buttons are all the way up <laughs> she doesn't need they to don't unbutton things to get need, things done they don't need to be down she's fine without it okay yeah. all right <laughs> so now fine. Now yeah. that we have set our goal and yes. set all of the stuff, the book of the universe closes. You may at any point, however, while we are no longer in free discussion, you can, if you would like, make a statement about the world. However, you will need to roll for it. 2d6, if you fail, the opposite or something horrifying happens. One. Mixed success means that you get what you want, but there's a little bit of a trade-off. 
Full on success means you get exactly what you want. We ran the full gambit last time where we ended up in the darkest timeline where people could not be truly resurrected once they had their time stolen from them, which was yeah. awful. Yeah. So Very. <laughs> we are now going to pause for 10 minutes while I write as much as I can to get this thing done and everybody else gets drinks and goes to the bathroom. I know I have to go pee for sure. Yeah. So we're going to pause and we'll come back in 10 minutes where we will start the actual session as well as just finish up a few note things about like health and other things like that. So Word. give me 10 minutes. All right. We have had our 10-ish minutes for me to write. I say this knowing that things happen behind the scenes because things happen behind the scenes. Um, All good. So few more little housekeeping things before we get started. So when you roll your rolls, if you get a six or lower, that is definitively a failure. You have failed, bad things happen. If you get a seven to nine, that means it is a mixed success. That means that you ultimately accomplish what you want to accomplish, but there is a price. You manage to jump the building, but an item falls out of your bag. Or you hit the ground and you make a loud noise and it alerts everyone in the area, but you jump the gap. A 10 to 12 is a success. What you have stated succeeds. Additionally, um, you have... Do, 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 do. You want to talk about resources? Yes. So basically, when you find things, you have basically their resources. When you find things, you can you can use them. Uh, there's nothing wrong with just picking a thing up off the ground. And then there was specifically what I wanted to talk about, which was the when you fail, mm. you add a point to a pool. Um. And you can add points onto additional rolls. Um, yes. Yep. Um, however, you can only have a maximum of plus two on any given roll. So you can spend as many points. I, I, I thought it was only a maximum of two that you could add, barring it going over two. But it is, you can add as many as you want, as long as you do not go beyond plus two for your bonus. So that means so like, you are kind of on your own for what you are best at, but everything else yeah. is fair game to add the points to. So that's every time you fail. So if you get a six or lower, you mark a point, you get that. You also have 10 hit points. Okay. And I will, I will tell you if it is more than one, but if you get hit, assume it is just minus one hit point. If you lose all your hit points, you die. Um, and then of course, just to reiterate, you can at any point, make a new statement about the world, whatever you want it to be. However, because we are no longer in free discussion, you will need to roll for it. It is a roll with no bonus. If you fail the roll, sometimes it could be the opposite. Sometimes it could be something worse. Bad things happen. If you get a mixed success, you might not get exactly what you want, or you may have, there might be a price assigned to it. And if you get a success, then what you say translates one-to-one -one into the world and everything works out. So you do have to be very careful when you make these statements. You can't just make these statements to win. You have to be very careful because you could screw yourself over. So, oh shit, I didn't name the hospital. That was what I was forgetting. Wilkins. Oh, oh, so she's not just the head of medicine. She owns the bitch. All right. Like, I'm you know cool. what? We'll call it the Wilkins Reed Research Hospital. Wilkins Reed Research Hospital. So she's got a. Stupidly, it started with someone, and then that person either died or she was just too bad of a bitch for them to continue working there and they quit. Um, she pushed him out and took his chairs. <laughs> does seem like something Agatha Wilkins would do. So. Yeah. Uh, give me like one second because I think the dog is about to freak out because my roommates are going to get home. 
Oh, okay. Just yeah, minutes, so you like, need to take the take the dog. Yeah. It's it's just gonna it's gonna be loud. Oh, okay. I mean you can always just Are mute you, and we'll Yeah, you know what? Fuck it. I was gonna say they're taking forever to get out of the car. I'll just mute real quick. Okay. So we begin our story. What started as a pretty normal day at the Wilkins Reed Research Hospital suddenly turned to terror. There was a distant rumbling, and about half the machines in the hospital shut off. The Wi-Fi goes down, the lights go out, even watches and some phones also go out. And then there are several explosions that are heard across the hospital as parts of the building begin to cave in. It is complete and utter panic as people run in the dark, not knowing where the exit might be or if there's any help coming. So where are you all and what are you all doing as these rockets are hitting the hospital? Um, uh, I am currently in the middle of uh, oh, like with uh, one of the uh, the patients who's having a particularly rough time of it um, in one of the uh, privacy rooms. Um, all right so we'll say that maybe this is a particularly agitated uh moth person there you go uh yeah. who keeps smacking into the walls as you're trying to use your aura to calm them down and just when they get calm enough the lights go out and the rockets hit so everybody else um, Herr Doctor is, uh, oh. <laughs> probably, uh, I don't know, um, let's say finishing up half a submarine sandwich that he left on the, you know, instrument table there while he was looking over a, a, a corpse. He did actually take his gloves off, mind you. He's just very comfortable around corpses. He just happened to be eating a sandwich in the mm. same room so you know he's mid sandwich bite when when the rockets hit and yeah his you pull your sandwich up. away moments before the room shakes and a one of the one of the fluorescent lights detaches itself from the ceiling and smashes the table that you just had your sandwich on my horse radish <laughs> <laughs> And Adeline, I'm assuming you are in your tank. Yes, Adeline's just, um, she's, what time of day is it? What time of day are we in? Uh, it it's probably, time? probably around lunchtime. So maybe around like 1230. Okay. Um, oh. she's, she's just swimming laps in her tank at this point. Uh, I don't know if there's anybody in the room with her or not. Um, it, 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 it's it's not a bad Adeline day. It's it's a it's a good Adeline day. Um, we'll just we'll say that maybe since it was around lunchtime, you might get like fed around eleven thirty. So you've just you've a few minutes ago finished up a nice good pig carcass that they dropped in your tank for you, and you're you know just like doing a little bit of swimming to work a little bit of a bit of it off before the room just starts shaking and the glass to your tank shatters and you are washed out in a torrent that flows over the various lab equipment that is just on the other side of the glass that they use to monitor you deeper in your tank when you decide not to be so close to the surface. And you find yourself in a darkened lab full of screaming people that are running for an exit. <laughs> and we'll just say that you all are pretty we'll say that you all are pretty close together it's probably a downstairs room um it's definitely a, a, a downstairs part of the lab so there's no windows to the outside um 
but yeah, you all are pretty pretty close to each other. The panic room is pretty close. The um the room that Air Doctor was just working on a corpse in is is pretty close too. So you all can probably mm. end up finding each other in the absolute chaos as surprise excuse me, surprisingly, alarms have not started blaring and the residual power has not kicked in. Yeah, so uh, something weird has happened. Dr. Angstrom just like yanks, I don't know, guess gets up, yanks one of the tablets off the wall. He's like, what the hell? Why are the, why is the alarm not going off? Oh, my God. Um, what was his name again? I think you chose Andrea. Andrea. Great. Andrea um, opens up the door and he's like, is everyone okay? It's just screaming. I'm going to say you probably open the door onto the lab floor and you see about maybe, depending on how deep the tank is, like four inches of water on the floor that kind of begins to flow into the the room that you were just in. And you would probably see Adeline on the ground in four inches of water, just looking around. Does any of that water reach where Dr. Angstrom was working? I'm going to say that, yes, you begin to see water flowing in at a very slow rate. So it's not like you're going to open the door and just get a torrent directly to the face, but like enough that you're like, oh, the floor is wet. Can I diagnose this to see if I figure out where the water came from? <laughs> um, sure. Roll me a diagnosis check. All right. I'm going to roll it. First roll of the night. I got a seven. <laughs> so that is a mixed success. You can't quite tell from looking at the water where it's coming from. And for some reason you decide that perhaps the best idea would be to reach down and put your fingers in it and then lick your fingers. There is a distinct sort of dead pig taste to the water. Yummy. Not a pleasant bacon taste, a dead pig taste. I was going to say, oh. isn't that just ham? Adeline's tank must have ruptured. I have to get to her. <laughs> Yep, so you open the door to see the hallway is slowly starting to flood. It's only a hop, skip, and a jump over to the lab that faces Adeline's tank. Oh, and my all... beautiful creature. <laughs> so Adeline's just, she's not going to flop on the ground or anything. She's just going to like, oh, and like it, for a minute there, there's like the Ursula like pushing herself up daintily by her. Not, no, the Ursula doesn't do a dainty. She's just hefting herself up. But then her like, the fins going along the back of her six foot long tail start flexing in grotesque ways as she kind of forces herself up into a slithering like probably a good like five feet of her actual tail is still behind her on the ground with all of her extra hmm. musculature flexing and only about one foot of her tail is up and then it's the human upper torso oh she's just like oh. so like a fish tar like a fish um. <laughs> Andrea is going to look back at, um, to check to see if the Mothman is um, in even more distress, I guess. Uh, well, the Mothman is definitely in more distress as he is uh, very much smacking against the exit sign that is somehow still on. Um... Um, can he try to direct the Mothman out of the exit? Uh, sure. How would you like to do that? What? Which one of your skills would you like to use? Um, sorry, it, I dissected dodging. Oh, motivating. All right, roll it. Two d six. Tell me what you motivate get. Motivate that moth. Ugh. Ooh. Uh, six. Oof. Oof. Uh, so this. As you try and get the moth man away from the exit sign and encourage him to go somewhere else into the building, uh, he does panic and unfortunately smashes his face directly through the exit sign and electrocutes himself. No! Heimlich! <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. 
as he falls to the ground um, into the water. There is now exposed electrical wire that is sparking above a floor that is covered in water. Oh my god. Um, and I make a uh, what was it? A running check to try and get to the uh, to Adeline? Uh, sure, I guess. Yep. Oh, fuck. I guess I'm also going to run. All right, roll it. Like, out out of the water. Uh, <laughs> damn it, six. Yes, I got to so make sure. Make sure you have two points down, Andrea, uh, that you can add to your rolls. Uh, you run and you slip, uh, and you land on a bunch of glass. I am not <laughs> going to make you take a wound or a hit point of damage because it is just glass. But you start running towards Adeline and you slip. And you land in a pile of glass. Um, we we should we should get out. Uh, uh, ah, I'm gonna I'm not gonna run because I don't. Uh-huh. I'm just gonna slowly slither waddle my way over. There's some undulation. It it's sexier from the waist up than it is from the. Back. <laughs> yeah. um, okay. And- also, Hamish, you said you got an eight. I got an eight. Yes. I'm going to say you can make it across the room, but you are probably at some point very soon going to have to replace your shoes because the tread oh. has been pierced with glass. So if you walk oh. on it for too long, you will get glass poking your feet. But you do when make we, it across when we get the room. Out of this water, I'll just I'm just gonna toss the shoes. I'm just fine. No, I'm gonna save the shoes as a weapon. No, oh, I guess you can do that. Can I try to? I don't know. We don't know if we'll need them. Andrea up and take him away from the water. I don't know. What um, skill would you like to use? I'll try protecting him. All right. Because I feel it. like the glass isn't as bad for. I mean, I'm. I got an eight, a three plus a five. All right. So, um. Andrea is heavy. You're not moving very quickly. Thanks. But you do manage to slowly make your way to the exit and out of the exit. There's still a bit of water on the floor, but there's a little bit. It's it's kind of like almost like a little conversation pit where there's like a step down mm. from the door. So you have to like kind of climb up it. But you are now out of the water. I feel like it's easier for me to move in. In the four inches of water than out of the water too um but True. I mean, it's more dangerous so yeah i'll move him out and be like come come on come. you just see like she's dragging him uh she's like arms under either one and then there's just six feet of tail mm-hmm. flashing around with enough force to propel them all right come so on. you have successfully made it out of um the um the, the lab, the glass-filled water lab with the broken exit sign. Um, and panic protocols, everyone. We must secure Wilkins. Wilkins, sorry. All right. But we I have will... to the level two. I don't know, oh. or something. Some other level with a number. That sounds appropriate. <laughs> All right. I will say, Hamish, Earlier today, you knew that um, Agatha had flown to Europe to give a speech at the National Medical Institute, the International Medical Institute of Virology, about research that she had completed while here at the Wilkins Reed Research Hospital. She was to be arriving today by limousine driven back on to after she she had landed, she landed about 45 minutes ago. Meaning that whatever is happening, she's going to be entering into this. Uh, but then we must make for the entrance. I don't know, maybe, can I, can I like check on my little tablet thingy? What do I have? See if, see if she's arrived or something. What's, what are my skills here? What are, um, what are we... Uh, can I... I... Can I gain access to the building security cameras for my tablet? Roll it. All right. Uh, six. I got a six. Oh my 
All right, so mark down a point. Okay. And as you finally manage to get the tablet to turn on, all of the cameras are out. (sighs) At this point, I think you would be intelligent enough to know the alarms were not going off. The residual power did not come on. People's phones aren't working. Your tablet and camera aren't quite working. There's a very high possibility that whatever's happened involved an EMP blast to a various, some part of the building that might have affected some of the technology, but not all of it. It's possible it might have taken out all the cameras, but it might not have taken out other pieces of technology you don't know. Can I make a check? A what? Well, check, uh, like a statement. Uh, Sure, what statement would you like to make? Um... Most of the invaders are dangerously incompetent. Dangerously incompetent. All right. So roll it. You get no bonuses. Seven. All right. So that is a mixed success. Um, it seems that with the, with some of the technology working, they may not have known exactly the right points to place the EMP, but they did enough damage to most of the systems that most of the technology might be inoperable, but there will be some pieces that might still be working. Perhaps the panic room is still working. Uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, Dr. Wilkins, she was arriving today. It is important we get her to the panic room safely. Where is she? She has to arrive any minute now. I forget, is she arriving by limousine or by helicopter? She is arriving by limousine, as she always does. Most likely to the front entrance. She could be under attack. Her research is more important than any of us. He said. Um, okay. I mean, she is the only one who's trying to cure us, so. Uh, yeah, but I would rather be alive long enough to to be cured, you know? And it's the panic room or the rockets. And her doctor is the only one who can access it, so. Okay, okay. Let's go. Um, by the way, doctor. Not swing, but not running. Uh, by the way, doctor, do you by chance happen to have any bandages for this? And he turns around. Uh, just kind of bop my fist into the wall and pop open a first aid kit that's just hanging right there. Just oh yeah, there's like... tons of them all over the all over the hospital. It, um, it's you know, yeah. <laughs> Hello? Okay. Now can we keep moving? I can't really, like, wrap my back by myself. You know, I'm not oh, an owl person. i a ton around. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I'm going to say, since you're a doctor, it's easy enough to just wrap them up. Sure. And yeah, there we go. You all can head out. Can I search oh, on the way there like for resources? Uh, sure. Make me a search roll. We'll make a search roll, which I get a plus zero, so mixed success. I got a seven. All right. So, of course, you find another one of those little kits somewhere else in the hospital as you all are running towards the entrance. You find another one of these first aid kits that has been untouched. And, of course, you find a defibrillator, um, just in case you might need it. But you don't really find anything else. Maybe you find like a bottle of hand sanitizer and a few more bandages on a cart that just kind of rolled out into the middle of the hall after it was blown, you know, but like nothing too super major, just some, just some stuff that you might really need, but also like nothing like syringes full of insulin or anything like that. Oh, okay. Uh, to, to, to the elevator. Quickly, as fast as your fins can go. We have to make I'm, another running check. I'm moving as fast as I can. You do not have to make another running check unless you want to. 
I'll say that. This this game uh, is very much about letting you all choose what skills and telling me rather than me asking for skills. Okay. So um I want to be I want to like le lean down and sort of like fireman carry uh uh Adeline to the uh fish flopped over here. <laughs> yeah, basically. To okay. the uh, to the uh the elevator. All right. We just don't have the time to waste. Yep. All right. She is so a delicate, five hundred and seventy-four pounds. Um, <laughs> yeah. Doctor oh, Angstrom. Doctor Angstrom. It's on muscle. It's grab on. the tail. Grab the tail. It <laughs> stop flopping so much. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm scared. See, it's not the fortune when we meet her. All right. So you make it to the elevator, which, surprisingly, still works. You press the button. The doors close. The soft yellow light as you hear the the Muzak, sort of piggity-poingity Muzak, before Thank the doors God. open. Thank God. Could you imagine going up the stairs carrying a line? <laughs> yeah. Seems the EMP blast didn't make it this far because once you get to the entrance, there are, in fact, lights that are on. And oh, you see God. outside are armored military vehicles through the window. All of them are weirdly pink. <laughs> there is also glitter in the air. I would oh, no. say that, Hamish, you would recognize this as being Elite M Solutions, a paramilitary group that has been giving some funding to Agatha for the hospital. They are very much about using this to create super soldiers. However, the previous sort of runner of the um this sort of paramilitary group died and his son took over uh his son has some interesting interests and decided that elite m solutions the m of course standing for monster needed some rebranding to make it more fun and hip with the kids his idea of hip with the kids is glitter and pink. No. <laughs> you have been betrayed. Uh, At this father? point, you do see a missile trailing pink smoke hurled towards a, another part of the building and explode in rainbow sparkles. Do we see <laughs> Agatha anywhere? No. <laughs> However, you do see a limousine that has pulled up. Shiza. She's not made it into building yet. Why does this pink look like Pepto Bismol? <laughs> it is it is Pepto Bismol pink. Um, Why are we getting attacked by Lisa Frank paratroopers? <laughs> it's the McIntyre Jr. He's terrible <laughs> with much more terrible than his father. Uh, and it What's turned out all the, the heads of the... I will say his name is General Odeon McPhee, who is the I son would... of Harold oh. McPhee. I got it. I went McIntyre, you went McPhee. I was right there. Yeah, I was about to... You were so close to me. It would be awesome if all of the generals were, like, his, uh... His, um, his girlfriends <laughs> look like Barbie. God. Well, you'll find out. Um, but yeah, you notice a bunch of people in pink Kevlar vests with guns and bunny ears approaching the limousine. Phil, oh. uh, I wanted to keep this a secret, but I think now is the time. I've been working on a project. I'm going to make a world statement here. All I've right. been working on a project to enhance your abilities. I think it is our only hope. I swear to God, if you decrease our abilities, 
just gonna fucking jab Adeline with a syringe. Just for that. <laughs> you're gonna have to roll for it, right? And we'll see table. what happens. Um, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and add a point to that. Did I fail twice or did I fail once? You, you failed, failed once, I think. Once. Okay, yeah. I'm going to add a point, and that's going to make that a seven, which is a mixed success. So what does the serum do? Well, what I was hoping that it would do is, let's just say, enhance their natural abilities, you know? Whatever they're good at. So, like, you know, fast monsters get faster. Strong monsters get stronger. Maybe a little bit bigger overall, all of them. I don't know. All right. So now that you've jammed Adeline... <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to go for it. Uh, I am going to say, because it was a mixed success, I'm going to say you... Hmm, you immediately get two failure points. Ah, However... Okay. I get two you, or Hamish gets two? You get two because you were the one that got jammed. Oh, cool. So you immediately get two points as if you failed two rolls. But when you use them, you are going to roll a resist, a resisting hunger check. Ooh, I like that. And if you fail, you will take a bite out of the nearest person. Okay. I casually... And went. I will also say... If you use those points, there is no restriction on adding to beyond plus two, but only for those points that you get. Got it. Got it. It is a, also a temporary serum. And I will say, you do have more. Okay. Uh, and so... that is how Adeline's is going to work. You feel okay, Adeline? So oh, what, 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 I am a master craftsman. She's fine. You just watch as like the veins in like her human skin start bulging and pulsing in different colors. You're oh, a loony is what you are. <laughs> um, I think it'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> What's what your hair looks like a human stress ball? God. What did you do? Oh, what am I supposed to do? How are you feeling? He's like tapping on the tablet to see if he can wake it up. <laughs> <laughs> it's still a black screen. I, I, it's just I a black feel... screen. Just throws it. Yeah. <laughs> I feel all right, I think. You feel alive? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I hope so, yes. I, I feel I feel fine. Just a little, I mean, I feel a little hungry, but that's about it. And then go eat my child. <laughs> At this point, you do hear guns beginning to go off. Oh, it is. Uh, there's a gunfight around the limousine. Okay, I'm gonna slither forward, and I'm just gonna be like, um, the, the doc, um, e earmuffs. Oh. Oh wait, and, my earmuffs. Yeah, I'm gonna start singing at the gunfight. In the limousine. All right. Um, make me a singing check. I'm going to make a singing check. Okay, that is a 10 plus 2 is a 12. That'll do. So that is a success. So what is your what is your plans with singing? Are you trying to make them do something specific or just simply distract them? What does so, Adeline singing do? Adeline's particular... Well, like the way she sings is it's not like girly pop, hyper pop, humanoid actually sounding words singing. That's right. not the noises her body makes when she sings anymore. At mm -hmm. closest, it sounds like some sort of beautiful synthetic fusion, symphonic melody of like whale song. Plus, if you know the Swedish uh, cow calling, uh, calling. Uh, yeah, there you go. Know. Swedish yeah. cow maids. It's like a fusion of both of those. Okay. And the intent of it is either communication underwater, but there's mm -hmm. no fucking mermaids around, or the other intent on why theoretically the doctor has hypothesized she developed this ability is to lure prey. 
All right. So she's just trying to draw and like, I don't know, through subsonic manipulation, it tries to lure people to her in a non-threatening way. It's a siren song. Okay. So with that success, all of these bunny-eared Kevlar vest wearing guards, the Lisa Frank abomination that is their uniform, yeah. all turn and begin to walk towards you. Uh, and they all stop in like a semicircle around you. That was the end of my plan, Andrea. Sure thing. Um, I'm gonna just be like, uh, while they're walking towards me, because let's just say, I don't know, weirdness, extra throat thing. Can I convince them to drop their weapons on their way over by speaking and singing at the same time? I'm gonna say with that 12, yes. Oh. Um, like, I've got human vocal cords up here and then I've got weird, horrible fish marine anatomy through the rest of my torso. Mm -hmm. yeah. My stomach yeah. somewhere in my tail region, actually. Mm. Um, so yeah, they, they drop their weapons. There, there is an assortment of weapons. Uh, you see mostly AK-47s that have been painted pink and gold with Lisa Frank stickers all over them. But you also see uh, something that looks like a grenade launcher. Except sticking out of the end are two uh, stuffed bunny ears that looks like the grenades are probably tied to stuffed rabbits. Running check to go pick that shit up. <laughs> Roll it. Uh, here we go. Come on, baby. Fuck me. Three. You run to house? pick up a gun. You trip. And you fire the bunny rocket. Yep. <laughs> Off goes a stuffed rabbit. It lands on the trunk of the car of the limo. And then the limo flips over in an explosion, sending shrapnel everywhere. <laughs> Wait, do we see Agatha anywhere? Over there? I don't know. There. Not Guys, many checks. <laughs> Um, you sure. deal with that. Sure. I've got, <laughs> I'm still like having this is a insanity. Moment. What would the check be? Would it be a diagnosing? There is also search if you want to use oh, that, yeah. but um, where's can you search? I need to find Agatha. Search, roll it. Oh, that's a nine. Nine, there it is. So you quickly dash over to the limousine and you begin to look around. Um, the nine is a mixed success. As you are searching, you find there is a manila folder. It is empty. You pick it up. It has the official logo of the Wilkins Reed Research Hospital on it. And you open it up. It's empty. Scrawled very quickly, very recently, is in what appears to be some sort of fountain pen, just in lovely handwriting, a lovely pink handwriting. Nice try, motherfuckers. It is slightly smudged. Um, I don't know if you would recognize it, but does Hamish uh, look at the folder? Uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That is Agatha Wilkins' handwriting. There is nothing in the file. Oh, thank God, that badass bitch. She's not here? It doesn't... Listen, what the hell are we doing out here? <laughs> uh, can I roll to dissect one of the guy, one of these soldiers entranced by me? Uh, sure. I want to. I want to try to take a bite out of crime. Oh. <laughs> As a fucking monster mermaid, I love it. Ah, yeah. Oh, that's a five. Oh, I get the, 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 the. um. Ew. It seems you've forgotten that they're wearing Kevlar, Kevlar. vests and you break Ooh. a nail. 
what are, yeah, I'm getting yeah, no closer to two... your prey. Ugh. I, you just, I, I'm still like half singing at this point. Like it's very like rattles. I will also say mouse. that one, as you are clawing at him because you failed so badly, he is no longer entranced by your song and he is going to start running for a gun. Oh, uh, can I um, charm him? Uh... Ooh. Uh, sure. Yeah. Uh, or Make I'm going for it. And I'll protect Agatha. Or Adeline, I mean. That is a seven. Okay. So I'm going to say uh, the guard manages to pick up a gun, fumbles with it for a little bit, turns. He does not shoot Agatha. He shoots you in the wing, and you are going to take one hit point of damage. As he oh, shoots another, you. And uh, Andrea's like, damn it, another hole. <laughs> <laughs> um, 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 I think we should run away. Where, where the, where the fuck is Agatha? Where, what the, what the fuck is going on? I'm so lost. Uh, can I, I mean... So these guys are kind of entranced, but I don't know what else I can do other than keep singing at them. There's too many of them for us to fight. Uh huh. Um, mm -hmm. Ooh, here's an idea: entrance them to strip. Why is it always sexy to you? Because without their Kevlar, they're less protected. Oh yeah, that is a good point. <laughs> you freaking lunatic! And. I mean, uh, why? There's still like from one set of her, from like her chest set of fish vocal cords. There's still the the noise coming. Out. She's like, okay, and she's gonna. <laughs> I love it. It's just talking over a soundtrack. <laughs> it makes no sense. Uh, what kind of role do you want me to make? Uh, I uh, don't would know that what role. Charming or overtaking? Sure, you want to use overtaking? I'll I'll accept both of them. I'll use overtaking. Um, and are you just wanting them to take off their Kevlar vests, or are you wanting them to give you a a, a show? No. Uh, let's sure strip strip people. How's an eight? Is that a failure or a success? That's a mixed. It's a mixed success. If I use a point, does that go up at all? To uh, ten. Ten is a success. Ten is a, ten full is a success. success. So it would go to a I, nine. So it would I still be a mixed success. It. So yeah, it's just a mixed success. So if can I make a suggestion? Okay. So they start stripping, but they're just really bad at it. Yeah. Basically, they have no, none of these people, they are trained soldiers. They are trained soldiers. They are trained mercenaries. They have no groove. They have no rhythm. They have no boogie. Uh, it is terrible and embarrassing and cringy to watch them in almost total silence try and wiggle that booty uh, to take off their pants. They are also wearing it. things like heart patterned boxers and... Uh -huh tidy whities and all kinds of unsexy underwear, but they do strip. I almost lose a hit point just from the cringe alone. <laughs> you know what? If you want to take off a hit point for the cringe alone, you certainly may. I will not stop you. <laughs> okay. Uh, can I try to... Um, Let's try overtaking, I guess, maybe? Can I, like, inject one of them with a tranquilizer or something? Sure. Give me an overtaking roll. Mmm, next success. It's seven. Um, it, it takes a hot second, because he is still trying to boogie. Um, oh, and it's God. very hard to try and aim correctly. So you do end up going through, <laughs> you might have caused some damage. He might wake up and uh, have some paralysis in some parts of his body. Um, he might sustain some nerve damage, but you do manage to tranquilize him and he goes down. Uh... Um, I am going to say at this point, um, walking kind of like peeking out of a bush with a very concerned look on her face 
<laughs> is a very familiar person. It is Millie. Oh, oh. She is Millie. the 26 year old mousy brown haired PA or yeah. yeah, personal assistant of Agatha. Millie. She's apparently been hiding in a bush. Millie is her name? Millie is her name. Okay. Um, so, um, I will say the other name. Um, Andrea um, notices Millie and he's uh, she's very mousy, right? Yeah, she's she's kind of very shy, very mousy. You know, she's she's the one with the clipboard. She kind of walks around like this a lot. Yeah, so I imagine that and Andrea would like to hang around. Well, hello. Okay, so um, I imagine that Andrea would be very familiar with Millie because she's very I. Like she's a very shy person, so mm-hmm. I imagine that like, he would want to help her, like calm down with his general aura. So he's um he's very familiar with her, and so he uh he goes over to her and um oh. like Millie, are you okay? Yeah, I'm 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 fine. Um, yeah. Um, so I. I don't know where Agatha is, but <laughs> luckily, and she pulls out of her belt a walkie-talkie. We heard some things were going down. There were some rumblings on some networks that Agatha is part of. She ended up bailing about two minutes before we reached the gate. I don't know where she went, but she probably is fine. She took her shotgun with her. Um, well, knowing her, she could probably take off five, five of these guys on her own. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, but she told me to to stay hidden along with her guards. Um, unfortunately, I think all of her guards ended up getting shot. Um, but, you know, had to keep up appearances. Um, I think she still has Saunders with her. Um, he's the top guy. So, of course, he'd go with her. Um, I can try and reach her on the walkie-talkie, see if Tell her that it's safe and okay, okay, cool. Yeah. And she kind of turns around and Agatha, we're safe. And then you hear this sort of Andrea. She found Agatha. I don't know why I'm whispering, like they're all just standing here naked in front of us. Like I <laughs> Yeah. One guy is unfortunately trying to helicopter but cannot. Um, (laughs) he is failing miserably (laughs) it's just hanging back and forth I'm gonna get it (laughs) (laughs) these they are they are terrible Um, I think she's in her office if we can get to her office I think she has a stash of like grenades and shit in there of course she does my god, I love this woman. <laughs> That's awesome. I am level five. Okay, everyone, let's go. Let's go. Let's go before these people wake up. Wait, yes, are, do they knock them out or are they just like naked randomly or half naked in the middle of the floor? Okay, they I'm are naked them. and half naked, still boogieing. Okay. I'm assuming you're still singing. I, I'm, I'm just this. You guys have had this conversation to the side. I, I I lowered my volume slightly so my I to like was lesser. Um, <laughs> Andrea puts his earbuds um earmuffs back on and uh, now just, that they're now that they're all boogieing naked, would it be easier to dissect them as a group? Dissection check. What I Dissection want to do, check. I want to whip my tail around and just gut as many of them with a tail barb fin as I can. Fair enough. Oh, um, I'm gonna scalpel a carotid. So, Andrea, being an incubus, I think you would also have like a barbed uh, or a spade tail. Okay, that's yeah. So, if you all want to make a dissection, I did dissection check. 
I got a four. I got a fucking four. I can't even spend no! two to get better. You try I, and aim your tail at one, but he's boogieing, and you hit him with the flat of your tail, and it's just domino effect. Half of them all just go down, and then they slowly get back up and start boogieing again. You have not succeeded. Uh, are they going to um, follow me if I move away from them? It, are they going to what? I'm just wondering if they just are they just gonna follow me dancing if I try to move away from them now? Like a conga line, probably. I feel like it's ineffective for me to keep singing while we try to escape. So we got. Can I just try to tranquilize them all real quick? Like, see how how many how many bogeys are we talking about here? Probably about like twenty of them. Oh fuck no! Okay, there's no way I have twenty of these fucking things in my pocket. I, I will say one of them no, is tranquilized, no, but probably has character. nerve damage due to your ineffective stabbing with the syringe. <laughs> That's what buff out. Um, Ooh, I got an um, eight. An for eight dissect. for dissection. I'm yeah. gonna say you get you get three of them in one foul swoop. Just just disembowel them as they just sink to the ground. You watch as they feebly keep keep trying to boogie on the ground before they just go motionless. Dr. Angstrom just staring at his scalpel like fuck. Can I try to overtake? <laughs> I want to try to overtake the crowd and I rolled a seven and I'm going to burn one of my special one. Can I, can I burn multiple failure dice together or no? Ooh, as long you know as what? it does not reach more than a plus one. I'll assist you by diagnosing how you should sing. Do that. I've worked with you before, you know? Because, like, my roll on my dice is a seven, and I can, I've got two regular failure and two of these magic points you gave me that. Oh, and you um, can use, well, use beyond technically, plus two. you can't, you, it, yeah, so you can use the regular ones, but then if you burn the beyond ones, they can okay. stack, but okay. the others can't. So if you had three, you could only use the two and then the. Yeah. The magic ones and you'd have one left over i'll use the two and one of the magic ones left over and i'll make the resist hunger check after i would like to get a 10 to send them all away from us and just be like go find your boss whale song in the background and a yeah. dance for him. all right oh that poor man all right. <laughs> now make me that resist hunger check I'm also they, I'm also gonna say go you cannot use any points on this because it is an effect of something. It's an effect as opposed to like actively trying to do it. Can I try to take a bite? I, I rolled a six, which minus uh, for resist hunger is minus one. It's a five. I'm gonna try to make take a bite out of what's her face, Millie. Yeah, I'll bite Millie. Oh, oh no! Protect Millie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I got a 12. Yes! So you watch as Adeline whips around, hunger overtaking her eyes as she lunges towards Millie. Millie screams and holds up her clipboard ineffectually. And you manage to just grab Adeline, who scrabbles for a moment before the hunger leaves her eyes. And you have successfully protected Millie from yeah, being just... eaten by Adeline. Uh... Did this the humanoid eyes blink, and when they open up, pure black like a fish. Have I ever told you how beautiful you are? Wait, to me or to... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, yes, to Adeline. As he's protecting Millie, like, like holding you from the back, like he's just whispering in your ear. <laughs> beautiful, she almost turned Millie to minced Millie. I know. I, Maybe we I should head to the, the office. I think I know a shortcut. We should probably just... Okay. okay. And she Doc, turns and she just something. starts sprinting. I'm going to flop side and be like, carry me, boys. <laughs> <laughs> just be like... Uh, 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 Lift with the legs. Why yeah. do I always get the tail bit? Well, you're the one <laughs> holding me up front. Give him the tail bit. So I'm like, Doc, I think there's something strange with your serum. It made me so hungry. You know what? You can take the the front part. If she gets hungry again, she can take a bite out of you. Oh, what a way to go. <laughs> oh, God. I'll be right back. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, uh, oh, where, what? Oh, He's yeah, going to get a Taco, Taco Bell. Bell. 
Taco yeah. Bell. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, in so, case we haven't gathered, Dr. Engstrom really likes these monsters. <laughs> um, Andrea is, uh, what, okay, you were talking about how that's such a way to go. And I am, I was going to say, tell me, doctor, is therapy part of the employee package? Uh, I suppose it depends on what kind of therapy. <laughs> um, we administer lots of different kinds of therapy. Yeah. For you, I would suggest electroshock. Oh, no, please. I finished my electroshock treatments years ago. Uh, and Millie turns around and, sorry, we don't cover that anymore. We do cover gene therapy, though. Ooh. And he just, like... <laughs> mm -hmm. I... God, I, I, in his head, he's just, he couldn't help but imagine what Dr. Angstrom's house must look like. Mm. It's side note, but it's actually just like hot in the lab. It's got a mini fridge for pre wrapped yeah. sandwiches. Yeah. Oh. Just sandwiches. Yes, just sandwiches. Like just sandwiches. Pre wrapped, like deli convenience store. Like half of a sandwich. Oh yeah. my god! Yeah, that's that's what he lives on. Yeah. So you all are running, carrying Adeline, who is currently getting Taco I, Bell, yeah. um, <laughs> towards the staircase. Luckily, if I didn't have to be stairs. Luckily, however, coming down the stairs is. A man that you would recognize. Sort of very tall, built like an absolute linebacker. Sunglasses, earpiece, desert eagle in one hand. It's Saunders. And behind him is Agatha. She is wearing oh, a, a baby blue pantsuit with some, for some reason, baby blue Louboutins. Her Love hair it. is pulled up into a bun and she has a shotgun. She also has a cigarette in her mouth as she kind of removes it and just... Uh, she just doesn't... So you're what's left? Oh, my doctor, yes. Fear's the only one who made it this far. Uh, Dr. No Baldwin is nowhere to be found and Andrea killed Heimlich. Andrea um, killed... What? I and was it looking forward to dealing with that moth man, but and you just watch as she just the whole cigarette just disappears over the course of two seconds before. Yes. All right, <laughs> let's let's get down to that panic room. Got to make that call, and she flicks the butt off into a bush as she cocks her shotgun. All right, let's move out. You know, um, I never thought about Andrea that. Andrea okay. says to Doctor Angstrom. You know, I'm not sure who I'm more turned on by. I know, right? And He's Saunders and Agatha are... <laughs> they boldly surge forward with Millie, like, <laughs> just kind of following. And at some point, Saunders pulls out another Desert Eagle and just hands it to Millie, who just stares at it, who's definitely never held a gun before, and is just like... Here, Teglius. Oh, oh. Still holding a scalpel. Like, <laughs> yeah, just still holding a scalpel. You know, so just have a fish woman in your arms. Yeah. Yeah, carrying yeah. a fish woman. Loving yeah. everything about this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, it, um. Colonel Sanders? What? You say Colonel Sanders? <laughs> what? <laughs> Okay, so you all manage to make it down to the panic room. She uses her retinal scanner as the doors open. Right. Quickly, get inside. And you all make get your inside. way into yeah. the panic room. And the door oh, shuts. Oh, no, my sandwiches! Oh, shit! 
<laughs> All right. Well, she goes to another part of the room. There's a there's a desk in this room. It's kind of a, a, a two-tiered room with a little staircase that goes up. So there's the big old desk. And on this desk is a glass container with a red um rotary telephone, phone. rotary phone yeah, on it. Go. I was trying to think of the name for it. Um so you doing there that? are various computers and it looks like they're all on there's various desks and things with computers that people can work at um there's also an industrial shredder in case they needed to shred any files um there's also what appears to be a wall of guns and ammunition uh and you all are safely in the panic room and she begins to go excuse me go through her keys as much as I like having as much security around this place as possible, I'm going to have to search through my keys to unlock the drawer that has the key to the phone in it. So give me just uh, five seconds. Uh, our suspicion is going to be destroyed. Um, are there any of them in the hospital? Or did we just, like, strip them to uselessness? Cameras what? are out. No idea. Yeah, cameras are out. <laughs> okay. The EMP blast took out the cameras. Is there like a is there a speaker system in the hospital? Oh, I would assume so. Do we have access to the speaker system from this room? Search it. Oh yeah, I'll search the room and see if there's a speaker system access. Yeah. I got a six. Okay. <laughs> um I'll help. Uh oh right. And I got a seven, so you can add a plus one, I think. Oh, which great. would make it a seven, which would make it a mixed success. Um, let me try. That's Are you also be... searching? Yeah, that's a nine. All right. Next. All right. Yeah. So, yes, there is actually access to the PA system. However... It needs right. a code to work from the panic room. Yeah. Of Jeez, course it well, does. At the head of the hospital. I keep All right, fine. What, what announcement are we even trying to make? I saw this building was blown sky high by the time I drove in. I saw that pink smoke for miles. Well, we could try to get everyone to gather. And I, 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 I there were what twenty of them outside of your limousine that I stunned. I could maybe does does my song work over a recorded or projected thing, or does it need to be in person? Oh, make a statement about the world. You can make a statement about the world. Okay. Um, for some strange reason, or not strange reason, because of subsonic frequencies, the song works perfectly fine via recording or projection. We're hearing it secondhand. All right, roll it. Okay, heart of the dimension. The di I got a nine. Dimension the dice. A nine. I can't use anything to bump that, can I? No, nope, because so. it's a world statement. Great. Okay. Yeah. So Zero. I am going to say that it does work secondhand through video, through um, like PA systems, megaphones, things like that. But unless the person is actually hearing it with an earshot, they cannot be commanded. They can only stand still entranced. Okay. So you can entrance them, make them stand still and not do anything, but you can't make them actually okay. do things like you could if you were in person and they were hearing your voice firsthand. Okay. I feel like that's a fair compromise. Um, I think that it would... Um, I think that something that uh, Agatha and her staff would also have been doing over time was uh, collecting Andrea's pheromones um, <laughs> and having like a uh, a ventilation system that disperses it throughout the hospital. All right, world statement, roll it.
Uh, seven. All right. Mixed success. Mixed success. All right. Well, we can try with some of Andrea's pheromones. Um, and Agatha puts in the code for the PA system. I'm not sure how much of the hospital was affected by that EMP blast, but we can try. Uh, hopefully some of the hospital has got the pheromone system up and running. Uh, I think I can get it going from in here, but then I will be unlocking this phone. And she kind of begins hitting buttons and switches on the desk that has a lot of buttons and switches uh, and things begin to turn on. Uh, well, it looks like Looks like the lobby, as well as uh, most of the cafeteria and the east wing of the building has the system up and working. Uh, so anyone in there is going to get doused. But it looks like anything in the west side of the hospital, that's all out. Whether that's rubble or EMP blast, I don't know. But it looks like that system ain't working. If you do what you can. Pulls out another cigarette, lights it. All right. Well, I guess if you get on the PA system and start singing and they stop, maybe, maybe. I don't know how much of that PA system is still working. Um, let hey, me... Like... So, sorry to interrupt, but by, by chance, uh, Millie... Yes? Uh, do you have a recording device like um... for taking notes? Like for taking notes, um, yes, but I left it in the limo. Damn it! I was thinking that we could record Adeline's voice. Well, that I mean, that would make them stand still, but it, we couldn't make them do anything. Right, but standing still is better than them attacking us. Very Just... true. At this point, you hear several explosions go off right next to the room it is shaking there is concrete falling from the ceiling i'm gonna shout earmuffs and then i'm just gonna start singing into the pa system all right i'm in my happy place i'm in my happy place suturinga keep me suturinga keep me um okay so i'm going to i got a five plus the innate two is seven mm -hmm. and I can, uh, yeah, so it's a mixed success, right? Or is that still failure? Yeah, that it's a mixed success. success because you got a seven. Did okay. you use any of your... I've got one special failure point and one regular failure point from, like, the dosing earlier, but I don't, can those stack on top of the other things or no? If you but use even... the magic one, that will put you beyond the plus two, but that'll only get you to an eight, which would still be a mixed success, so I wouldn't recommend using it. Yeah, I'm just trying to get them to right. stop attacking for now, if possible. All right. Over the PA system. All right. So it seems that as the PA system kind of crackles to life, it seems intermittent. You see the light blinking on and off occasionally, irregularly, as if this system has not been updated for so long, or it being a panic room, the hospital didn't maintain it as well as they should have. It is intermittently on and off, on and oh. off. What, There's a like chance a that someone might escape it, realize what's happening and cover their ears they're not going to be totally and fully entranced, but there might be some that are. So it's for tempted engineers. I was going to say, what is this, like a game of red light, green light? <laughs> Basically. Oh, it seems like it might be for some of them. Um, finally, as these explosions are starting to kind of die down a little bit, as she is quickly trying all opening as um sorry as agatha is trying to open the drawer to the to the key she gets the key right as the wall explodes uh. and walking into the panic room is Junior. a relatively short man 
All red right. hair. Wearing the pink vest. This one does have a lot of like Lisa Frank stickers all over it. The Pepto-Bismol pink uniform as he walks in, sauntering in. Well, hi there, Agatha. That kind is of size. Not so. General McPhee. Seems we made again. Yeah, well, we had some issues with the speed of your research. We just wanted some of it. And you thought this was the best way to get it by blowing it up? Well, I'm assuming you had a backup server somewhere. All good hospitals do. As long as we didn't blow up the backup server, we could take whatever we wanted. I have to say, sir, you look exactly as I imagined. I know. Everyone says that. So, seems we've searched a lot of the building. Seems your friend over there is having fun with the PA system. Um, so, how about... And he kind of snaps his fingers and in walks another dude holding a small cage inside of this small cage oh, no. is a rabbit this oh, rabbit no. is sort of blue and way more cute than what a normal rabbit looks like but it is chewing at the bars making a sort of <laughs> sort of sound and he pulls out a syringe and sticks it into the rabbit and pulls out this sort of purpley blood that you can see inside of the syringe is swirling with these sort of gold sparkles so in the name of my god did you get that I have my ways. We are a paramilitary group. We can threaten a lot of hospitals. And we do. So either you hand over the research or no one's getting it. And he uh, puts the syringe to his own neck. Charm. I'm going to make a charm uh, check. All right. I will assist him by also charming. Oh, damn it. Okay, no, I won't. So that means, depending on if it's a... Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm going to use my two failure points. Uh, Can you use your two failure points? Will that put you beyond a plus two? Um, Oh, wait. Well, uh, six uh, plus two is... um, So what is your bonus for charm? It's a plus two, so six plus so. So you can't two, use them because you cannot have more than a plus two on okay. your roll. Yeah, that's okay. the highest bonus you can have. So save those points; you can still use them. Yeah, yeah you can still use them. Adeline only gets to do it because she got the two special ones from the doctor serum. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I still have and one of those. There's a cost to those. Yeah. You can't um, you you can't go beyond. So you could use four on your minus two to get up to plus two, but you can't go beyond plus two. So your charm can't actually get any of those failure bonuses all right okay uh 10 10 there it is all right that is a success as he well i'm not exactly an unreasonable person so perhaps we can work something out tranquil i still have a (laughs) (laughs) all right we have him in the chest. Get him. <laughs> what <laughs> is um uh, can I can I uh shit, what do I want to roll for that? Um, yeah, I was about to say, what do you want to roll? Fucking uh it's definitely not dissecting. Um Ooh! If, if you can't do it, I have something I can try. That's let's gonna try, no, let's try to do overtaking. It. Every everything's a fucking plus zero, so why not? Mixed success? I got a mix. All right. Seven. Seven. Yay. All right. So you lunge towards him. 
And once again, with the inexpert hand of a person who is not used to tranquilizing the people that he works on, you make uh, several stabs uh, at him. You probably cause nerve damage to General McPhee, but you do manage to subdue him and tranquilize him. However, his soldier <laughs> picks up the syringe that he drops and is still holding it. Yeah. I mean, there's a moment where you watch him kind of look at the syringe. Can I scream at him when he picks up the syringe? I'll stop singing over the PA. I just don't right. want this guy to inject himself. Nope. Um, I don't know. Is that still a singing check? Maybe <laughs> it's it's an eight on the two dice. So what so, do you, what specifically are you trying to do? Because that might change what check you may need to do. I want to paralyze him subsonically, like. Halt all movement. If I may right. make a different suggestion, um, you could use your vocal range to make the glass of the syringe shatter. Oh, that's I guess actually I could try smart. that. Yeah, that's actually really smart. Could I do that? Maybe. I if, will... if it's eight plus two is ten. So if if singing is the check I'm making to just use my vocal cords because mm -hmm. they're like the major or one of the major mutations of being what i am yes yeah. <laughs> can i shatter the glass in that thing by screaming at it yes and you said you got a 10 i got a 10 if we're doing a singing check yes all right the syringe shatters luckily he is wearing a glove so the blood only gets on the glove sizzling a little bit as the glass shatters but also the glass around the phone shatters as you watch, she, Agatha just puts down the key. Well, don't need that anymore. Picks up the phone and starts yeah! dialing. Yes! And with Whee! the enemy subdued and Agatha with access to the phone, she manages to call the International Medical Institute of Virology to warn them about Elite M solutions and the threat to their research, as well as that they would need backup copies of the research sent to the facilities. As it turns out, Agatha was very smart and kept an offshore backup of the files instead of an on-site backup. It does take several months to recompile all of the data and get it all put back together, but with some significant construction going on the building, you do manage to get back to normal. Elite M Solutions... Due to the oddities of some of their members being publicly embarrassed nah. in a very nah. specific way, <laughs> end up leaving, but not before the National Guard shows up and opens fire on them. Oh, no. And that yeah. is where we are going to end the second episode of You Awaken in a Strange Place. Equally as bizarre and weird as the last one, but such okay. is the game. So I am okay. so happy that we finally got to play this again, and I hope we get to play this again. Maybe I will eventually get a new group of people to play it. Who knows? The last one <laughs> fell through. Fine. But you will definitely be seeing more of this on the channel. So we'll see you hopefully soon for a regular episode of Red Dirt and Stardust, but hopefully. We'll be seeing you at some point soon for another episode of this fucking game. So join <laughs> us next week or whenever and goodbye. <laughs>